Welcome back to another video here on Madden 24 and today that's the big one It's the one that has been requested for a while now and that is of course the how to draft a perfect fantasy draft guide here on Madden 24 obviously it was once thought that it was not going to be doable because when you go in you start a fantasy draft there is no transaction list which is how we look for all the players back in I don't even know how many Maddens ago now there used to be just a scroll option with the, I think it was either left or right analog stick, and you can go up the same amount as like kind of the transaction, a round or two in the past, and it was so much easier to see, but we still have this workaround with the transactions. Thankfully, all you have to do is back out and then come back in, and it fixes. I'll show you an example of it when we actually get into it, but in case you don't know how to start a fantasy draft, you literally click start a new league, and you click active roster. Now, of course, there's going to be people watching this at different times. There's going to be somebody watching this in, like, November 3rd. And they're going to be like, bro, this is so out of date. I, all the players you said are gone. Or this guy's not even that good anymore. Just note, this is from 827. I try to do these as quickly as possible because we want to use the newest roster as possible. Because a lot of people want to do their franchises early. We're a little bit later than normal because I honestly just didn't know you could do it. And then when I finally found out, I was like, oh, I better do this. So, without further ado, let's go into it. You have to use active roster. It sucks you can't use, like, a certain point. So, it's going to be tough unless you start very recent to this video. Now, the thing is, with a fantasy draft, it's not going to be perfect anyways. You know, when I have, uh, you know, let's say, for example, round 7 or something, Kenneth Walker goes, like, pick 4 in round 7 or something like that. I don't have the exact example on my screen right now. You know, he may go a whole round early. He may go around two rounds later. It is very randomized. Most of the time, the list I've got here, I've done two or three sims. Uh, I think I did two and a half sims. Uh, it's pretty accurate, but once again, it is not a exact science. And now that I think about it, I actually don't even know what draft pick I want. But either way, we're going to show you how to do it. Start a fantasy draft, and then there's a couple of other things that need to be changed. The league password doesn't matter by the time this video comes up. The password will be changed anyway, so you can join if you want, but I really don't care anyways. Uh, I don't. I do this, but you don't have to do that. You can do it whenever you want. Uh, but the main thing, of course, is the injuries. Turn all that off. And then I'm doing the snake draft because I think kind of defeats the purpose with a standard draft because why would you go 1 through 32? If you have pick 1, you can pick 1 again. That just doesn't make any sense. So snake draft is pretty much the traditional one that most people are going to do anyways. And basically, from there, you click start. And you're ready to go. So basically, Snake Draft, all of pre-existing injuries off, and you're cooking. You, you're right on in. Before we go any further, if you guys want to see this team rebuilt, which I know you don't have the team yet, so you're like, I don't even know if I want that. 750 likes, we will do a rebuild of the team. Um, maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. It would help a ton. And so would uh, subscribing to the channel. If you like franchise stuff, I'm your dude. I do a ton of franchise stuff. I have a lot of fun, and... Hopefully entertain some people. And speaking of those people, uh, if you're not new, really appreciate your continued support on the channel as we try to get to 100k subs, which is absurd to think of, but it's in reach. It's in sight. Could be some time in fairness, but we're going to try, and um, that is about it. Uh, I apologize that the second channel, Picare Plays, did not have a video today, maybe sometime this week or the weekend, hopefully but that is it. I've been enjoying some Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just haven't really been able to record it because the setup isn't really great for the people who I'm with. If I play solo, I can record it day in and day out. But it's so much fun with other people. And if I can try to get that set up, I will. But anyways, on to the guide. And honestly, this is basically the perfect pick for me. I obviously like to go with Pass Rusher pretty early on in the draft. And it's usually my number one pick most of the time because it's one of the harder positions to draft. And the talent definitely drops down the line and you got you want abilities and all that uh and obviously at pick 24 i have uh, max crosby actually going at 24 most of the time so this would be a perfect fit but also tj watt actually drops a little bit uh 29 is kind of where i have him he is 28 years old now speaking of but still very usable still very you know uh, you know worthy of taking you can obviously go for like a rashawn gary in uh, the start of the round two but max crosby is very good fast enough 26 and X Factor. He's here for at least almost a whole decade. Very good finesse. And I mean, he's just the first pick of the draft. Simply put, very easy to, you know, argue with. Not really much of an argument, to be fair. And this is where, uh, you know, t uh, DK Metcalf is like somewhat close to being obtainable, but he usually goes about five or six, which it seems like this time he has actually done that. Now, with the next pick, 
plenty of different options. I really don't like going corner early. I think cornerback is a very easy position to get. And even this Madden, I actually find DT very easy to get. But it's so hard to pass on a Dexter Lawrence. I feel like if I don't go DT this round, I'm going to be reaching very hard. But at the same time, that might be the smartest option. Is if you look later on, I've got two Eagles defensive tackles that are in like round 12 or 13. Maybe they're not as great right now as some of these other guys like Quentin or Dexter, but they're very good. And I just think DT is a little bit of a reach here. But then the other option would probably be some sort of um, potentially edge rusher like Rashawn Gary would be basically the perfect pick, him or Brian Burns. But I argue that that's too OP. For me, my definition of a perfect fantasy draft team is not a team that is stacked top to bottom, but a team that is good in the positions that you don't necessarily want to develop, but also gives room for development, right? In my opinion, going for Mahomes does not make for a fun franchise. When you look at your favorite Madden YouTubers, how many of them are using a team that has an OP QB? Not many, right? So the idea of, uh, you know, like I'm a Holmes, I don't think is considered the perfect draft because I just think that you can get more fun out of developing someone, which is why the QB I'm probably going to choose here is more than likely going to be like an Anthony Richardson, but obviously it's your choice. That's why I have the list there. And as we go on, I will mention some of the key names that you could go for instead of who we're taking. And like I said, for pure like OP players, Man, Rashawn Gary's hard to pass on. 25 years old, you know, fast enough, great power move. But like I said, do I really want to go for, you know, two OP edge rushers? I mean, you can't even develop a guy, and you're going to just smoke most D, uh, offensive lines, which, like I said, I don't know, is fun. Metcalf even would have been a little OP, but at least with Metcalf, it's only one guy, whereas two edge rushers, that's like, that's set. Screw it, I'm going to go lineman. Tristan Wirfs in the second round. A very good value because he's a superstar. It is a reach, I will admit. Maybe could have went with Dexter Lawrence instead, but I want the DTs later that are a little bit more fun. Developing O-line isn't really fun, in my opinion, so that's why I didn't put on the list. And now, I'm going to debate on this, but I might go with two OP linemen as we have Quentin w uh, Nelson here. I almost called him Quentin Wilson for some reason, who is pick six in round four. We also do have uh, Panay Sewell, who's an 86 overall. I don't know the abilities of these two players, but Sewell's a great player too. But I think Quentin Nelson, who may be a signal four years older probably, might still be worth it more than Sewell. Ooh, five years. That is starting to get there. I might actually go Sewell instead. And here's another option. So instead of Sewell, we could go with Kyle Pitts, who I think for a pure OP team, you want the most OP you could possibly go. Kyle Pitts here, hands down 100%. But the thing for me is, I think you can develop a fun tight end on your own. And later, it's really tough because Kyle Pitts is so good. But later on, you can get, literally in round 45, Luke Musgrave, the guy I always talk about so often in the game, at round 45. And I mean, even here, you're probably going to see him pretty high on the list. Musgrave, this is what Musgrave looks like, so you can make a decision yourself. But 6'6", 22 years old, normal dev, very much so worse but that's really up to you. Are you trying to get the OP team uh, or are you trying to develop some players? And in my opinion, skill position players are the most fun to develop. But for this uh, situation, I do not want two superstar tackles as that makes it very hard to be pass rush. I'm actually going to go with Kyle Pitts just to add a little bit of that OP team to it rather than it just being like, oh, you said perfect team yet all the players are developable. Like they're all really low overalls. It's like, yeah, that's my definition, but so far, not a bad draft. And now this is a really tough decision to make, but Tariq Woolen, I know there are a lot of six foot uh, four corners in the game, but there's not many six foot four corners with 98 speed, 80 catching, and 85 zone coverage. Uh, Tariq Woolen goes very high this year. He goes in the fourth round, believe it or not, which, I mean, based on Madden concerns, oh, I believe it because he is very good. So I think if you're going to go with the OP corner, Tariq Wollin is a must-have, fourth rounder, star dev, 24, 83 overall, he's 6'4 with 98 speed, what do you want? And I should have mentioned it before this, but if you were someone that wanted Bryce Young, you kind of would have had to take him well before where we are here, but like I said, I think the goal is Anthony Richardson. Um, I think the floor would be CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson, Anthony Richardson goes later than him being Stroud. Also, Jonathan Taylor would have been this round a little bit earlier than this pick. 
And then one of the big players I've sold on, and he is gone, would be Creed Humphrey, which is pick uh, 20, I believe. And this is tough because, once again, if you're trying to develop straight-up wide receivers and you don't want them to be decent out the gate, you probably don't want to go JSN. But, I mean, I'm kind of thinking I want to go JSN, which is really tough on me because, like I said, I mean, do you really want a guy this good? He goes uh, 24 in the sixth round which is a little bit of a jump here, but we only have pick, like, what, nine in the next round, so we got to take, you know, basically back-to-back -back players, and then we have a huge skip on our hands. And it's going to be early, but I'm going to take Jamison Williams now. Uh, he goes re really early in the seventh round. You know, a guy that does have a lot of insane athletic athleticism ratings and all that, but still a guy that does need to develop. You know, he's not hidden development trade or anything like that, so Obviously, that is a choice. Now, this is a risk because I do like Frank Ragnow a lot, but there are options at O-line, but I have Frank Ragnow going about 28 in the seventh round, so I can maybe take a shot here by skipping on him, which I think I probably will, once again, because it's an offensive lineman position that we aren't necessarily like forced to take. And it does suck because JSN is still there, but I really don't need this many wide receivers, do I? Do I? Do I? Screw it. I mean, I've got a lot of skill position players here. I, I, I'm going to go JSN. I would probably go JSN before Jamison. I think Jamison is better than JSN in the game, but development trait-wise, eh, up in the air. Really hoping Frank's here. This would be a really clutch move if he is. And he is. So I'm going to make sure that there's no one else here, but this is my high pick. 30 is Devon Witherspoon, and then at 7 you have Christian Gonzalez, but it's not necessary that you grab them right now. So I'm going to go Frank Ragnow, and then I might reach one round early for Anthony Richardson. Stroud would have went this round, I believe. Just making sure I get Anthony Richardson at this point, but Frank Ragnow still being there was pretty great. I'm glad that he was there Ragnow. I will never say that again. Probably will, but I, I lied. And there's a good chance I did sell on one of the DTs, and Anthony Richardson is there early round nine. Another option would be B. John Robinson at four, but I cannot go for both, obviously. Anthony Richardson is a little bit of a jump here, but I can't get him next round. He is a very highly developmental beast. Clear cut, one of the best quarterbacks you can develop because, you know, he's got the high ceiling, and obviously he still needs some help to get there. Hoping uh, that ET's here, but I don't know if he will be, so we're going to take a look, uh, and it would be by Dev. Jordan Davis is here. Now, I'm debating on if I want to take him because I, I kind of feel like it's cheating as I kind of had him around the 18 to 20 mark, but he is still here, and that is kind of part of it, so I think I have almost no choice but to take him. I, I can't believe he actually is still here, though. Jalen Carter as well. I had both of these going similarly the same. I don't know what that even means, but... Jordan Davis, I believe, is still superstar in the game, and that's just, I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? So with this pick, it is going to be Jordan Davis. If it wasn't, it would have been Jalen Carter, so either way, we get one of the DTs. Of course, Isaiah Simmons would have been another choice, but we have other guys later that we can get that are maybe not as good as uh, Isaiah, but, you know, a Papo way later you can go with. I actually have Jalen Carter in round 12, really? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be our second DT, so it's going to be Philadelphia DTs, obviously. And man, all of my players are here. I love Quay Walker in the game. I mean, as a Packers fan, it maybe helps a little bit. But Quay Walker in Sim is just so good. I'm half tempted to do it. Just making sure there's also a Jamin Davis. Um, I think I think this is a great pick. Quay Walker, 78 overall, 23 years old. Insane size. Basically, you know, almost as good as Isaiah Simmons. Just not quite because he is a, you know, a little bit faster, obviously. And then we talked about it. Start of round 12 would be Jalen Carter. So if he is still there, that's going to be my choice. And uh, he is. I am really glad we didn't go Dexter Lawrence. I was thinking I might regret it. Do not, because we got our DTs. We're set. I mean, hell, I even think Jalen Carter might be too good of a DT, because I still have other guys that are very developable later. Now, this would be another miracle, but you just never know. And unless Mekhi Becton's not playing left... Oh, he's still there, but I don't know if he's still superstar. Oh my, he's still superstar. That is a hard pass. Right? A superstar old lineman is very tough to pass on. And I think there's a reason why it's tough to pass on, because you just don't. 24 is getting up there a little bit, I will admit. 6'7", superstar. There's nothing more fun for an offensive lineman than being massive. Everything else is boring about old linemen in the game. I'm going for the big, massive superstar. And this is where there's a little bit of a drop. I'm not really sure what I want to take in this round. Safety is kind of like the hot commodity in this round, which... I just think you can go even later if you want. 
Uh, Daxton Hill might be an option. Same with Lewis Seen. Um, Kirby Joseph's on the list, but I don't think he's like nearly fast enough to be worthy of taking a pick this early. When you got, once again, Daxton Hill and uh, Lewis Seen. Difference is, Lewis Seen obviously has that hit power and the size. But Lewis Seen is uh, like a late 15th, so 15th round that is. So I'm not really sure what I want to do here. I might have to look ahead to see if there's any rounds that are going to be double ups. And I want to make sure that, you know, I don't miss anyone, you know. And honestly, I don't know who to take. This is a several round reach, but I'm going to take Nolan Smith here because there may be some uh, conflicting pieces going down the line. But insane speed, maybe you can develop him as a coverage guy, but he would likely be a D end. But I don't even know if he'll be the starter because we do have a lot of other uh, good players here, too. And then our next pick is late 15. So we don't know if Lewisine is actually going to be there. So I will be taking him. I could probably take Dax there and then Lewisine the next round and be lucky. But I'm going to take Lewisine now to guarantee the guy. There's a little bit of risk in fantasy drafts. So sometimes you got to overpay to get who you want. And I really do like A-Chain, but I also like Gibbs. Gibbs would be here. I might actually take both of them if we have the luxury to do so. So with this pick, I am going to be taking Jameer Gibbs as our starting running back. Uh, he goes very early in round 16, so that's my choice. And then with this pick, I think we're going to be taking our other edge rusher in Miles Murphy. He actually typically goes around 8 to 10 in this round, so we got very lucky that he was here. He could have easily been gone. And then we go a little busted, and we go DJ Turner, the very fast, speedy corner. 97 speed. I mean, this team, at least, especially a corner, is... It is something. It is something. You know, the overalls are kind of on the lower side, but we do have a squad already. Um, was that our second corner? It was. So we still have an option to take another one, obviously, but we are cooking. And now Kalijah Canty kind of alters. Uh, sometimes he's a little earlier, sometimes he's a little later, but if Kalijah Canty not there, this would be Brian Brzee for me, but I like uh, Kalijah Canty more, so I'm going to take him. If not, Brzee's a great option as well. That would be your depth piece at the DT spot, I would assume is pretty obvious. And it's really hard for me not to just, like, grab all the best players, but I got to take the best players when they're there. Trenton Simpson is there. I will say, with the way the draft class is this Madden and some of the youngsters still being pretty good dev from last year, this is going to be the most OP team we've drafted for a how to draft a perfect fantasy draft team because there's just so much talent. It's ridiculous. And now we have a decision to make. Do we want to go A-Chain, who is an option? Maybe you want two running backs that are very good, and I I mean, I, that that is something I like. That is something I think is cool. Or you take Nicobe Dean here. Now, the problem with it is, do you really need Nicobe Dean? We have Papao later, who is even faster. You already have Quay and Trenton. Whereas running back, we only have one dude right now. I think I'm going to take the chance on A-Chain, who is more likely to be gone, whereas Nicobe could still be there for lucky. But I highly doubt it. So either way, A-Chain's going to be our guy. Backup running back versus starting linebacker. I know, kind of crazy to think, but... That was the choice. We got some linemen we need to take as well as, you know, Cyrus Torrance has gone there. Um, I doubt he's going to be there, but let's look for Nicobe. And he is unfortunately gone, but uh, these things happen. And this is a bit of a reach, I will admit. And I don't like that he's, you know, not the strongest, but Anton Harrison is one of the better young options later on in the draft. We do have two actual guards in uh, Avila and Ber Bergeron. But they are two years older, so Anton Harrison, a round and a half early, going to be playing guard because of the athleticism. And another speed demon, Keely Ringo, cornerback three more than likely. And now there's other options, but this would be the guy I would probably look to develop user. Once again, we could have went for a guy that's proven. We could have got Rashawn Gary, forget the O-line. But Derek Hall, I think, is perfectly fine and, uh, you know, a fun guy to develop rather than just being set at two OP positions being edge. And I'm going to double down on the position, so we have depth. D David Ajabo could actually be the starter instead. So doubling down, but we have so many picks, so who cares? And then one of the last kind of star dev linemen, I believe, uh, Kenyon Green. So Kenyon Green's going to finish out our offensive line. We're set on the O-line, technically on the offense. We really don't even need any other positions if we don't want. And even though he's like a round 29 guy, I mean, one of our final positions we absolutely need is safety. So Nick Cross, you know, he's one of my favorite fantasy draft guys in the game because he's so young and has those intangibles that those intangibles that you just can't teach. Obviously, that's kind of the whole point, but, you know, just, just ratings you can't just get naturally. And once again, we're just reaching, but at this point, I don't really care. I'm just taking who I want. You know, normally our fantasy drafts are going in the round 30s and we're done, but there's so much talent throughout the draft this year you can get so many starting level players even later so i'm just taking what i want now in order and probably a lot of them are going to be reaches compared to my actual like board joe titman super steel still there why not 
And this is Super Reach. He's usually gone 33, but like I said, I've already just accepted that I'm taking who I want when I want. This would be a, a tough user, but a fun one because of how fast he is. Great change of direction as well. He's a guy you can develop, and he's a beast user. And then a super fun player, obviously, Deuce Vaughn. Super small running backs we got. Maybe not the best viable option, but he's just too fun not to grab. Another fun, you know, developable guy. He's 23, but he's he's big with a lot of hit power. Uh, DeMarvion uh, overshown went up. Abanaconda, 20 years old with, you know, decent speed. He, he looks pretty good. So fourth running back and final running back, although you could take more if you want because there's so many good ones. Another classic backup pick, JT Woods, 23, but he's still very good. And even though he's 24, he's still too usable not to grab. Six foot four insane speed and change of direction at 234 to 235 pounds on top of it and another fun tall player he's actually not bad and potentially usable great backup pick blake freeland so we now have seven linemen startable starting caliber on top of it all of them and while we're still gonna grab musgrave darnell washington's kind of another must grab and you know here he goes wide receiver tyquan thornton's gonna be our number three probably he's super fast and or maybe actually number two with JSN at the number three. Makes more sense as he's a slot guru. Another fun tall guy. We're done lime with Lyman after this, though. Dewan Jones, 6'8", 275. Balling out. Very weak in pass block finesse, but balling out with that size. Too much fun not to. And then, of course, you wouldn't be a fantasy draft guide without Kelvin Joseph. And I actually did sell on Ika, which is really, like, stupid. Unless he's playing, like, a different position. He's supposed to be here late 40. I don't see him. Well, actually, he's a really low overall, isn't he? He's like 67, 66. He's still not here. I really like Ika, and I can't believe I just sold on him. Obviously, at this point, you could just trade probably like a seventh-round pick for him, but still. I guess our budget DT option backup is going to be Mike Morris, even though that's like our fourth DT anyways, I believe. And at this point, we're just finding random guys that have, you know, those the X factor, you know, the speed, great zone, maybe great hit power, something like that, and... Brennan Hill fits that mold. At this point, it's just grabbing whoever the hell you want. I mean, I don't really have much longer on this uh, thing. Didn't have kickers or punters go at the time, so I can just kind of choose who I want, which I believe Evan McPherson is still the best in the game based on age. You know, 28 for Daniel Carlson, whereas McPherson can't be more than like 23 to 25, right? 24. So Evan McPherson, the best kicker you can get. And then I believe... The best punter is still the, uh, what's his name? AJ Cole, I believe. And there he is. 96 kick power for a 27-year-old is perfectly fine. Another superstar. Two superstars. And once again, Musgrave should still be here. He is. It's ridiculous how good he is. And yet, 6'6 six, six overall. Usable, but, you know, a little raw in fairness. Catching's a little bad and route running's not great. But still, I would honestly debatably just draft him as my starter because I like the upside and you don't have to go crazy. Oh, Zion McCollum. Some really good players here. Some fun ones, at least. And then you're still looking at wide receiver. Darius Davis is a fun slot guy. And, you know, just basically going for speed. Probably going to end it there and just, you know, go to the actual revealing of the team. See what overall we're cooking up with. I would say maybe do a rebuild with this team, but it's going to be so easy to do that. We'll take a little bit, but as far as, like, who I actually have to, like, draft to replace, probably no one, honestly. Still go with Schwartz as well, but Matt Landers with the size is pretty fun. I know he has 24, which sucks, but good catching like a poor man's Claypool. Might still be worth taking just because he's fun. A.T. Perry, a budget jump ball guy. And as far as youth goes for quarterbacks, Carson Strong's always a good choice. And then as far as veteran goes for mentor tag, I believe Joe Flacco has it. I hope. Because uh, it would be a really bad pick if he doesn't. All right, to start out the, uh, you know, process of, you know, changing the depth chart, the team also has a mentor rookie. So it looks like Darnell Washington is going to be going up in dev just because he's here. Just uh, just because he exists. All right, here's the squad. The Bengals are an 84 overall. So that's just like one of the random bases. I'm going to say that overall should be. We're at 79, which is a bit lower than that. I don't know if that is the, the average. Maybe that's higher. Maybe it's lower. I don't know. But obviously, tons of talent. Uh, O-line is kind of all over the place. You would maybe put Anton Harrison at left guard over green. That really doesn't matter, though. They're both young, so pick your poison. Ultimately, the offensive line is set, especially at the left tackle and right guard positions with Ragnow. Um, technically, right tackle with Beckton, but he is still kind of raw, even if, he, if he's superstar. Jamison Williams is a freak, number one. JSN is a freak, number two. Maybe put him in the slot. 
Thornton maybe at the replace, but a lot of speed there to use her. Gibbs, A Chain, Vaughn, even Abanaconda could all be starters. Uh, Anthony Richardson, high upside, you know, rookie. Kyle Pitts is the best tight end in the entire game. Uh, we should be in a 4 3, which it does not appear to be. We're in a 3 4, but uh, Papo would be a starter, Walker would be a starter, and Simpson would be a starter with Crosby and Murphy at edge. The two DTs here uh, at one and two. The depth is great. Corners, maybe you need a new corner. Turner maybe fits better as a number three, but with that speed, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever. Strong safety, super young at 21, and then Cena at 23. Great hit power, and also young with star. So, I mean, if I were to realistically rebuild this team, what would I need to replace? Maybe a guard, just because I would draft linemen to see if I can get lucky. Um... Maybe one linebacker for Popo, maybe a strong safety in one corner. Other than that, it would just be basically a, a career sim video where I'm just watching the team just develop because we have basically every position filled. And if you guys enjoy this video, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, really appreciate continued support. You know, subscribe or like if uh, this helped you at all or you found it interesting. Like I said, uh, maybe follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care, second channel for Care Plays for non of content. I said there might have been a chance for a video today on that channel. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case. Sometime this week, probably, uh, if not by the weekend. You know, Madden is the main focus at the moment, um, and uh, it's been I spend a lot of time, you know, uh, setting up videos and actually recording them and all that. So, you know, that's that, and that's about it. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video. 